Now, it is going to be difficult to make a video about a cricket match that just unfolded in front of me because I am in many ways utterly speechless at what just happened between Australia and Afghanistan in the Cricket World Cup. Now, it's been a long time since I've done a cricket video on this channel, but what I just saw has to be discussed. Now, I don't know how many of you guys on the channel you know, like cricket, or I'd imagine there's probably gonna be a whole chunk of you that like it enough to watch it up until what is a reasonable bedtime. So for all those Australians out there that went to bed before this game ended, I feel sorry for you because what happened was the most, probably the most insane individual performance I've seen in any sport that I follow. Now, I honestly think if you're an Australian catching up on this game in the morning, it's gonna be difficult to really appreciate what exactly happened in this game that made it so special. Sure, Glenn Maxwell hit 201. Sure, Australia won the game, but it won't be the same as having watched it pretty much from start to finish. Now, I've watched pretty much every Australia game for this World Cup, so I've been quite invested. And so when you know Glenn Maxwell eventually won the game, I literally jumped up and down so much that I strained my neck. It's quite sore, but anyway, I'm still stoked. So to give you a little bit of background about how this game went. So Australia's playing Afghanistan. Afghanistan make a pretty damn good total of 291. In fact, uh, the way we bowled at the end or throughout the innings really should have challenged them more and making 291 on on that particular ground was a very solid effort and was certainly going to cause us a few problems in the chase. Now, again, for background, the highest score up until tonight that has ever been chased down at this particular ground was a 285, I believe. So we were up against it. We would have to have had a record-breaking chase to win this game in the first place. So this, the innings gets underway and we could start to tumble pretty early. In fact, it gets to the point where we've scored 91 runs and we've lost seven wickets. And Pat Cummins has to come in and bat in the 19th over of this game. So not only are we chasing a potential record-breaking chase, uh, we are seven for 91, and this game is over. Glenn Maxwell almost gets out first ball. He comes in on a hat-trick ball, and he gets uh, reviewed, and it was pretty damn close to being LBW. I think he got an edge on it from memory. And, you know, throughout the early part of his innings in particular, there were a lot of chances. He gets dropped fairly early on as well, and I'm talking a real lollipop spoon drop from a fine leg. So you got Cummins and Maxwell at the crease, uh, needing probably a tick over, a run a ball, maybe six and a half and over. And this game is dead and buried. For, for as good as Glenn Maxwell is, the most optimistic Australian fan would have to concede the best he could do is probably get us close and not lose too much in terms of net run rate, which is important. But Maxwell starts to get settled. The seamers from Afghanistan, uh, as the ball gets a little bit older, the batsmen start to settle a little bit against them. And suddenly Maxwell's hitting fours for fun because let's face it, the game's kind of over. Why not just try and play your natural game? Sort of half lost interest in this game. You know, I'm working from home. Probably shouldn't be watching it anyway. But before we know it, Maxwell's on 100 off 76 balls. And the crazy thing was, I forget what... Cummins was on exactly at the time, but it would have been like six or seven runs. So their partnership that they notched up for 100 runs, Cummins had scored less than 10 of those. And he was also just not really scoring that much at the other end. Even at this stage, Maxwell with you know with a 100 run partnership at 191 for seven or whatever it was, and needing about a run and ball for the rest of the game, this was still an absolute long shot. But here's where the plot starts to thicken because Maxwell then starts going through these epic cramps. And it's, it's unclear what exactly it is. It's a pinched nerve. The guy can't even move. And at first he was just sort of hobbling through his runs, but as he's starting to hit more boundaries, he's starting to put more pressure on that back, the more agony he's in. And he's visibly like grimacing after he plays shots, but it gets to the point where he actually collapses on the ground and for a number of minutes there, they're trying to get him, you know, to stop cramping at first and then ultimately get him back. It got to the point where Adam Zampa actually had walked all the way down to the rope to walk onto the field because it looked like Glenn Maxwell had to retire. But thankfully, he gets up and this game's still a long shot, but it's nice to see Glenn Maxwell get up and, you know, give us a real chance in this game. And there, the fours and sixes did not stop. And because he's in so much pain as well, the guy's not moving his feet at all. One of the sixes he hit was a reverse sweep off a fast bowler with the ball on middle stump and he didn't move his legs. He just flicked it over third man for six. Now it is short boundaries at this ground, but this is still ridiculous stuff. So then what happens is obviously Afghanistan start to lose their confidence a little bit and the batsman, because of uh, Maxwell's injury, stopped running singles. So there were entire overs going by where Cummins would be on strike. He would hit it potentially, you know, out to the deep, uh, fielder right on the boundary and the, the batsman didn't swap ends and it wasn't just because they didn't want to change the strike It was because Maxwell was almost completely incapable 
of running to the other end. In fact, the one of the one. One of the runs that where he actually collapsed onto the field in agony was a pretty easy single. So then what started happening was Maxwell, when he'd have his over on strike, would hit four, six, four, block out a few. Cummins would then bat out an entire over for a maiden. And this process was working for Australia because the run rate was at about six required and over, which meant that if you know Maxwell was scoring 14 from his over and Cummins was scoring zero, it doesn't matter. We're still averaging about seven and over. So the run rate was no issue. It was just a case of not getting any wickets. And it wasn't like Maxwell wasn't taking risks. He was taking all kinds of risks, playing the most ridiculous shots because he was so limited by his injury. The crazy thing was, I remember looking at the score at one point and we needed about 45 runs to win at one point. And Maxwell was on about 155 odd. And whatever it was, the exact equation was that Maxwell had to hit every single run for the rest of the innings to make a double century. I couldn't help but you know, pay attention to what his score was actually at. But then Rashid Khan bowls his last over. He was the biggest threat, you know, obviously a leg spinner and a massive wicket taker. And I think it was the over following that, Maxwell just teed off and hit several sixes. And of course, hits a massive six to not only win the game, but to bring up the first ever double century by an Australian in any ODI, let alone World Cup. So that was beaten. I think it was Shane Watson's previous score of 185. I think that was against Bangladesh off the top of my head. Maxwell's just beaten it by 16 runs and then in the same over hit his double century. The incredible thing about this as well is if you had gone to bed with a score at 7 for 91 and then just received the specific information that Cummins would score 12 runs from 68 balls, you'd be like, well, we clearly got annihilated in this game. But Glenn Maxwell hits 201 off about 128, I think. So Australia win the game with about three and a half overs to spare from memory. This was the second highest percentage of an ODI innings by one batsman in history. So uh, Maxwell scored 68.6% of Australia's runs, and I think the record is 69.5 by Viv Richards. The other incredible thing was, uh, in addition to being the greatest chase at this particular ground, was that the second highest scorer behind Maxwell's 201 was Mitch Marsh with 24. It was also a 202 run partnership, which is the highest ever in ODIs, for an eighth wicket stand, and they beat that record by 74 runs. And when you consider that's a 202 run partnership and Pat Cummins scored 12. Anyway, I'm sure there's going to be heaps of highlights for you to enjoy and bask in what I think was the most incredible individual performance, not only from the the odds point of view of the situation we were in at the time, but the physical duress that Glenn Maxwell was in. He couldn't move. He was in so much pain. They were ignoring singles. And you just think, well, you know, what could he have done if he uh, if he had been fully fit? And you know, Pat Cummins would have scored more runs for a start. There would have been a few more singles taken. But gee whiz, what an unbelievable win! And Australia qualify for the semi-finals. It remains to be seen against who. Probably South Africa at this rate. And there's one game to go against Bangladesh. My heart does go out to Afghanistan because. Aside from them, let's face it, they kind of choked this result a little bit from the position they were in, considering they dropped Glenn Maxwell. But, you know, for, I don't know, 75% of that game, they gave us a bit of a cricketing lesson. They were fantastic. They've been fantastic all tournament and have shown real growth as a cricketing nation. So my hat's off to them. I hope they somehow find a way to beat South Africa in the next round. But I just had to get that off my chest, guys. That was the most insane thing I have ever seen in sport. Hats off to you, Glenn Maxwell. You're an absolute champion. And that will go down as one of the greatest one-day innings of all time. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments section what you thought of the game, if you watched it, or what your reaction was when you woke up and saw the score. If you're new to the channel, much appreciated if you could subscribe to it. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.